Hi, my name is Yi Qing. Today, I'll present the work on Resetting Horizon in Gross Reinforcement Learning. This work is done in collaboration with Gao Wei and Professor David Su. Reinforcement learning has made exciting progress in a wide range of complex tasks, including real-time game playing, virtual model control of the robots. The success, however, sometimes depends critically on a carefully crafted cost function, which is a significant impediment to the wide adoption of RL in practice. English reinforcement learning, also known as IRL, addresses these needs by learning a cost function that explains the underlying goals and preferences of the expert demonstrations. Our work aimed to uncover the cost function for high dimensional, noisy, continuous system with unknown dynamics. We identified two key challenges in IRL, scalability and robustness. Classic IRL algorithm consists of two loops. The inner loop approximates the optimal control policy for a hypothesized cost function theta, while the outer loop updates the cost function theta by minimizing a distance measure between the approximate policy and the expert demonstrations. The inner loop solves the forward reinforcement learning or the optimal control problem, which is in itself a challenge for large and complex system. Many interesting ideas have been proposed for IRL, but they all try to match a globally optimal policy with the expert demonstration over the entire system state space or a, sample, a sampled approximation of it. For example, guided cost learning, relative entropy IRL, and GAN GCL match the global trajectory distribution. Gale and AIRL match the global state or state action distribution. This is impractical, particularly for high dimensional continuous system and is a fundamental impediment to scalability because of the curse of dimensionality and the large variance of sampling in high dimensional space. To scale up, RHIL computes the local optimal policy with receding horizons rather than a global optimal policy. And then we match them with expert demonstrations locally in succession. The local approximation and matching substantially mitigate the impact of high dimensional space and improve the sample efficiency of receding horizon R IRL at the cost of a local rather than a global solution. Mathematically, we aim to minimize the KL divergence between the local expert control sequence with the optimal control sequence computed under the cost function theta. We apply model predictive path integral, also known as MPPI controller, to compute this optimal control distribution. MPPI provides an analytical solution for the optimal control sequence distribution, which allow us to estimate the gradient of this KL divergence with respect to theta efficiently and update the cost function parameter theta accordingly. At each time step, we have n expert demonstrated control sequences. First, we sample m control sequences from the base distribution. Then we apply MPPI using the samples from this base distribution and the current theta to compute the optimal control distribution. We then minimize the KL divergence between this optimal control distribution and the expert demonstration to update theta. Finally, we take the first control in this optimal control sequence and translate to the new state for the next round of optimization. This contrasts sharply with classic IR algorithm, such as MaxAnt, which performs global optimization over the entire task duration T in the inner loop. While receding horizon IRL satisfies global optimality, it is much more scalable and enable RH IRL to handle high dimensional continuous system. The hyperparameter K, which is the horizon of the local control sequence, allow us to treat of optimality and scalability. Another key concern of IRL is noise in expert demonstrations and system control. 
human expert may be imperfect for various reasons and provides very good, but still suboptimal demonstrations. Further, the system may fail to execute a commanded action accurately because of control noise. We want to learn a cost function that captures the expert underlying intention rather than the imperfectly executed actions. To do this, RHIRL relies on a simplifying assumption. The cost function is linearly separable with two components, one state dependent and one control dependent. Many interesting systems in practice satisfies the assumption, at least approximately. Receding Horizon IRL then learns the state-dependent cost component, which is disentangled from the system dynamics and agnostic to noise. The structure assumption also enables efficient computation of gradient for optimizing the learning objectives, and thus improves the computational efficiency of RHIRL. Mathematically, the state cost is represented as the term in terms of the current state and the parameter theta. And the control cost is modeled as a quadratic term. Our experiment investigates two main questions. First, can we think horizon IRL scale up to high dimensional continuous control task? And second, can RH IRL learn a robust cost function under noise? We compare our method with scale and ARL, two IRL learning algorithms with state of art performance on high dimensional con control tasks. We supply them with the same expert demonstration and only evaluate the final performance after the loss has converged. To investigate the first assumption, we evaluate our method on a pixel level raw image input control task, car racing V0. It is worth noting that the input for car racing V0 consists of 96 times 96 times three raw images. And the forward policy learning problem is solved only recently by world model because of the enormous state space size. To our knowledge, our method is the first IRL algorithm attempts such a high dimensional space. We found that RHRL is the only RL algorithm that, that is able to learn a reasonable driving behavior. For example, we can drive in the center of the lane, we can make the sharp turn, and adjust the direction after the turn. Next, we want to evaluate RHRL under control noise. We supply the same control noise to all learning environment. We find that RHRL can still learn a reasonable cost function. Let's generate a good policy. Will Gale and RAIRL is unable to output reasonable action with the presence of the control noise. In conclusion, RHIRL is a scalable and robust algorithm that learns the cost function from expert demonstrations for high dimensional, noisy, and continuous systems. Our experiments show that RHIRL outperforms the state of art IRL algorithms on several benchmark tasks. One limitation of RHIRL is its choice of local rather than global optimization, an important issue that deserves careful further investigation. Overall, we view the scalability of RHIRL as a trade off against the optimality. While the trade off between optimality and scalability is well known in reinforcement learning, optimal control, and general optimization problems, it is mostly unexplored in IRL. Further, local optimization may tie the learned cost function with the optimizer. It will be interesting to examine whether the learned cost, learned cost transfer easily to other domains with different optimizers. We are keen to investigate these important issues and their implications to IRL as our next step. All right, uh, so that was the presentation. <laughs> uh, wait, hold okay. on. All right. Um, Okay, so I guess now would be the Q&A session. So 
uh, yeah. I guess you guys can speak up and uh, like or unmute and speak up, or you guys can post a question in the chat and I'll read it out uh, for our dear presenter here. <laughs> Thank you. And thanks for thanks for being here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for letting me to talk. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess this is relatively a quite small and new topic for people who's maybe pe for people who's familiar with reinforcement learning, then they heard about this inverse reinforcement learning. Uh, so basically that is to learn the reward function for reinforcement learning. Or more general, you can learn a, re a reward function even for planning algorithm, for any algorithm. A translation um, from how people know, like people know what is objective, but the objective is very uh, implicit. And the learning algorithm will not understand such objectives. So you have to translate that into something they understand that is reward function. So inverse reinforcement learning basically is to learn such a, a, a mapping from objective to something the machine can understand. I'm asking right. myself questions. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Davin here has a question. Yeah. Um, he says, uh, how do you get the expert demonstration at each local state again? Uh, I think I missed that part. Oh, uh, we get expert demonstration from uh, the south to the end. Then we chop it up. Uh, so we have a small piece of expert demonstration for every state. That is, uh, uh, I get what you're coming from. It's like if you, uh, if your algorithm step out of the expert demonstration, the next time you won't have um, something to follow anymore. It's just like dagger. Um, once you make small deviation, then uh, experts don't know what, how to act. So here's the trick, because every time we're doing online optimization, so we make sure that every step won't, we won't deviate from expert too much. So a reasonably range of expert, a number of experts can cover the entire space. So you won't step out and happen to be the case that there will be nothing you can match to. Did you answer a question? Thank you. It doesn't um, seem to be any questions for now. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you guys are, are not familiar with um, uh, inverse reinforcement learning. Uh, okay. Okay. So he's asking in IRL, do we, do we know, know the, the reward function? Yeah. No. The point of IRL is that you don't know the reward function. That's why you want to recover it. Uh, you only see how people is doing that. So you only have expert demonstrations. Then you want to understand what is the intention or what is objective of this expert. And then uh, with this reward function, that will be very powerful. For example, you can uh, run uh, RL optimizer to have the policy, or you can do co cooperative. For example, if a human has an objective and the robot is exist, uh, assisting the human, so you may not do the same thing as the, what the human is doing, but by understanding its reward function, you can do completely different things for helping human achieve their objective. He is asking, would you be taking interns to help out with your research? <laughs> I, I, um, uh, this is my first day of a second year PhD student. So that's very, <laughs> uh, um, probably if you're interested in this topic, we can talk. We can talk more on that. Asking a fundamental question since I'm due to this topic, uh, what is the difference between oh. RL and imitation learning? That's a good question. So. Mm, imitation learning is a, a, a broader topic. Imitation learning means that you are learning something from expert demonstration. So uh, there are basically two approaches to imitation learning. First is behavior cloning. So you just basically copy what the expert is doing. Uh, you clone their behavior. And the second is inverse reinforcement learning, which means that you are trying to recover the reward function. Then after that, you can repurpose this reward function. You can still generate the optimal policy or you can do something else. So uh, in short, Inverse reinforcement learning is a, it's a subclass of imitation learning. So you are still imitating, but you are imitating their behavior, uh, you are imitating their objective or imitating their um, intention. Thank you. 
Um, suppose an expert demonstrates several maneuvers making U-turns reversing. Is there a way to tell the trained agent to execute them on specific commands? Uh, let me see. By calling a correspondent factor. Yes, it's possible. That's a very good question. So um, let's say if the expert demonstrates several maneuvers, uh, then you're already breaking down a big problem into small subproblems and you identify them as repeating subproblems. So instead of learning one reward function from the south to the end, for example, for, for long distance driving, it's not possible for you to generate, uh, generate reward function from the south to the end. Then you can break down them into small subproblems and then learn a reward function for each. And when I, uh, and how do you determine to call each reward function is by telling them, oh, I want this functionality now, so provide me with this function, uh, so provide me with the reward function correspond to this functionality. But that's not the end, because um, having people to tell the machine what functionality do they want is still a burden. But that can be learned by meta learning. So you can also learn when uh, do you want such a f uh, such functionality to achieve your long term objective. Um, but that is a reason. Uh, th this is a not so explored area yet. Thank you. Does <laughs> I, I'm not really sure how to read this name. Rome, oh yeah. Right. Uh, use handcraft features to characterize the reward function. Yeah. No, we don't use hand re uh, uh, handcraft reward. Uh, no, we don't use the handcraft features. Um, we use a neural network to represent uh, to map from the state to the reward function. And for the image uh, level input task, we just use the entire uh, entire local space as the input to the reward function. So they has to extract the, uh, the relevant features. And I, uh, I think that's a very good question um, that it relates to what features should be we consider when we are um, learning reward function. And also I think that is very insightful because currently we are only using experts to provide demonstrations. So they only demonstrate as uh, how do we give such, uh, how, how do we behave optimally? But think about that. The expert also know what kind of features should we look at. And instead of using that as the, uh, using expert knowledge to handcraft the features, we can use this expert knowledge as the signals to train our internal representation for those features that we should be looking at. So we should use expert demonstrations more like in a broader sense. Uh, okay. Right. So that yeah, Davin still has a follow up question. Mm, if you optimization, try not to deviate too much from. The uh, we assume that it's generalizable, um, because we see. Wait a minute. Um, right. There will be a lot of space outside of expert demonstration, but um. By breaking down the large problem into small sub problems, we assume that small sub problems are repeated in all regions. For example, driving straight um, when uh, the lane is straight, that happens everywhere on every segment of the road and making a U-turn adjust the shape, uh, adjust your direction after U-turn. And that also happens for every U-turn. So I think a key assumption for this method to work is that um, the large problem really can be broken down into small sub-problems. And by solving the small sub-problem, you are solving the uh, global problem. And uh, I think that uh, make more sense if you all really drive off the road. So you have never seen that happening. And if the car ever drive off the road, then we don't know how to recover um, using this uh, RHIRL. So we are treating, we are really treating this efficiency for optimality. Optimality means that you know how to behave, how to correct from every of your mistake. So our trick is that we don't let you to make such a big correction. So you won't learn that many policies for how to correct with th uh, from those unreasonable states. Right, so uh, that. I think Tanshi's question has not been answered yet. I mean, that's the the, the second oh. most recent one. Yeah, you also mentioned in the last part that you want to explore the transfer transferability of yes, the reward, reward function. This parameter learned in one task can be transferred to another. Um, transferability in the sense that uh, could transfer to a similar task. So a task from a same distribution. For example, carpool may be similar, uh, a little bit similar to. Um, 
pendulum because they are all joints uh, swaying, trying to swing up. But for Luna Lander, there is completely different control. So when we are talking about transferability, and from our understanding, we know what is being transferred. Um, so only if the two tasks share some similar strategy, then that can be transferred. So we will not consider uh, to transfer from Kapu to Luna Lander, but we may consider uh, transfer from like a high speed driving to low speed driving from a navigation to a, a driving problem. This kind of similar task domains we will consider transferability. Um, yes. Oh, also, also, if we are really breaking down a big problem into small problems, we can also identify that this problem, small problem also occurs in some other task and we can consider this kind of transferability. Follow up, any comments on the number of expert demonstrations required? Yes, yes, uh, expert demonstrations required. For RHIR, we really uh, requires much less expert demonstration compared to those global method because they have to cover the entire space for them to generate, uh, more or less cover the entire space for them to learn the correction. But for us, since we don't allow them to deviate to uh, like really dangerous and unreasonable states, so uh, we only have to ensure that um, during our optimization, we want to step out of this expert demonstration zone, then that level of expert demonstration is enough. And if you're interested, um, we only have uh, 500 uh, expert demonstrations like trajectories for uh, a high dimensional, uh, high dimensional task like car racing. Kind of, uh, yeah, re reading the last one. Uh, just to check my understanding, you're kind of reducing the state space by focusing on the states that matters. Uh, yes, that's right, by focusing on the states that matters, but that's not a naive way of deducing what state matters. Um, it is, it's not just saying I only, I'm only interested in the, in the states that expert demonstration visits. Um, another definition of what uh, states matters is those states uh, can solve the task no matter where you are. So if you step out of that state, you can't uh, you can't really solve the task. So that state become unreasonable. Uh, but in this case, two of them coincide, uh, kind of in our example, like the ex the state expert visit is really the state that matters. But that may not be the case. Right. So there is uh, one more question: How is yeah. the NNN being used to map the state to reward features trained? Um. Neural network being trained. Uh, we use gradient. Uh, we use gradient descent. Just so the objective function is to minimize. Um, oh, I get. Uh, I don't know how to answer this question. So this is just not just a naive uh, a, a gradient descent because um, if you really train the end to end, the gradient computation can be very uh, inefficient. So we did some trick is that we uh, because we are computing the local uh, control sequence control sequence function. So that has an explicit form. This reduced the, uh, this help us to estimate the gradient. So we have an analytical form of the gradient. And then we use this gradient to act uh, as the learning signal, training signal, as in the loss to update to this uh, neural network. And we uh, use gradient descent. Let's follow up. How many expert trajectories do you have? Um, for, yeah, I am reading Singh's question. Um, so for car racing, this kind of high dimensional task, um, none of the previous method has uh, has tried on that. So um, we don't know what, how, how much is needed, but we can see that even 500, we, we increase this from like 100, 200 to 500, but we can't see an impo uh, improvement, a slight improvement in their performance anyway. So we guess they just can't learn it. So, um, but for, um, does expert demonstration include active? Uh, no, uh, currently the expert demonstrations does not include an active demonstrations. Um, I think this is a very good question because if our ultimate goal is to learn the objective instead of just something that can re recover the ultimate policy, to learn the objective, uh, negative samples are as important as the positive samples, but because that can review the decision boundaries uh, much more clear uh, clearly and also some near failures um, that it will also be very helpful for you to uh, decipher what is the decision boundary 
I guess I'm running out of time. <laughs> yeah, but 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 that was great. <laughs> yeah, was thank great you. Journey. Thank you so much for being here again. Okay. Uh, thank I, you.